Good day, I'm Hans Kalia from BSN3 Block B, and today I will be performing my return demonstration about nasogastric insertion. First, assess the doctor's order to identify the purpose of the procedure, as well as to ensure that we will be performing this procedure to the right client. Second, assess their level of knowledge and understanding of the procedure as well as their level of consciousness. Because as future nurses, we are responsible in ensuring that our clients are educated about the procedure and how it will be performed. Third, assess the availability and the functionality of the needed materials. Fourth, check for any history of nasal surgery or any deviation in the sec tube. This is to assess the patency of the nares and to avoid any sensitive tissue, thus preventing injury. Fifth, determine the presence of the gob reflex. And lastly, assess the client's mental status or ability to participate in the procedure because if this procedure may be a bit uncomfortable for the patient, but we need to encourage them to cooperate during the insertion to avoid any accidental insertion to the respiratory tract. Before inserting a nasogastric tube, determine the size of the tube to be inserted and whether the tube is to be attached to a suction. Then, prepare the following equipments. First, a large or small bore tube and a non-latex tube is preferred to prevent any allergic reaction. Second, a non-allergic adhesive tape or a micropore tape that is 1 inch or 2.5 cm in width. Then, a clean gloves a water-soluble lubricant. Since the use of oil-based lubricants is dangerous because if any case that the tube may be inserted to the respiratory tract, the oil-based lubricant will not evaporate and may cause respiratory complications. Next, facial tissues to wipe out the possible secretions. Then, a glass of water and drinking straw to calm the gag reflex when it is stimulated and a 20 to 50 ml syringe with an adapter, a basin, a pH strip or meter, a bilirubin dipstick, and a stethoscope. The pH test strip, bilirubin dipstick, and stethoscope will be used to assess for the correct placement. Next, a disposable pot or towel and optionally, we can use a clamp or a plug then, an anti-reflux bulb for air vent if a Salem sump tube is to be used, a suction apparatus, a safety pin and elastic band to stabilize the tube, and lastly, we can use a carbon dioxide detector. Introduce self and verify the client's identity using agency protocol and explain to the client what you are going to do. from the NSC and I will be your student nurse for today. May I know your name ma'am and your date of birth? Okay, thank you for that but before we get started to our procedure, let me just walk you through to the details of how we are going to do it. Uh, first, I will insert this tube into your nose and all the way to your stomach and it will, it will serve as the passageway for us to get food to your body because right now, you're having trouble swallowing and this is depleting your body from the nutrients it needs. And as I insert this tube, it may be a bit uncomfortable for you, but you should not feel any pain. But if you do so, you can just raise a hand and I can stop there for a while so you can rest for a moment. Next, assist the client to a high fowler's position if his or her health condition permits and support the head on a pillow. High fowler position will help facilitate the passage of the tube with the assistance of gravity. Then, place a towel or a disposable pad across the client's chest. This will help keep the clients floating just in case the client vomits or there are any secretion from the client's nose. Then, perform hand hygiene and observe other infection control procedures.
privacy by closing the curtains and the door to the room. Then, assess the client's notice for patency. And you can do this by asking the client to hyperextend the neck if he or she can. Then, assess the notice for intactness or for any abnormalities such as any irritation or abrasion. Then, examine also the anatomy or the structure of the nose if there are any obstructions or blockage such as a deviated septum for us to avoid those areas and prevent injury. And lastly, you can also ask the client to occlude one nostril and breathe through the other and do this to the other nostril as well. And this way, we can determine which nares has the greater airflow and that nares is where we will insert the tube. Now, I will assess the nares. After assessing the nares, we need to prepare the tube. The preparation will vary depending on the size of the tubing that we will be using. For a small bore tube, we need to ensure that the stylet or the guide wire is secured in position to prevent any injuries to the mucosa during the insertion. But for a large bore tube prior to the insertion, we need to place it in a basin of warm water to make the tubing more pliable. And for this demonstration, I will be using a small bore tubing. Then we need to support our patient during the demonstration or the procedure and then determine how far to insert the tube by using the tubing to mark off the distance from the client's nares to the tip of the client's earlobe and from the earlobe to the tip of the side point. This length will approximate the distance from the client's nares to the client's stomach. And since the tubing does not have any markings, we will use an adhesive tape. Then, lubricate the end of the tubing well with a water-soluble lubricant or a water to make the insertion easier. Now we are going to insert the tube with its natural curve toward the client and into the selected nostril. Ask the client to hyper extend the neck to lessen the curvature of the nasopharynx and then we are going to gently advance the tube toward the nasopharynx. Okay ma'am, I'm going to insert the tube right now and remember that if you feel anything, you can just raise your hand to tell me. But if the client dogs, stop passing the tube momentarily, have the client take a rest and take a few breaths and a sip of water to calm the gum reflex. Then, resume. And now we have reached our marking. To ascertain the correct placement of the tube, we can aspirate the stomach contents and check the pH which should be acidic. Place a stethoscope over the client's epigastrum and inject 10 to 30 ml of air into the tube while listening for a whooshing sound. Uh, another method that we can use is by confirmation using an x-ray. Then, we need to secure the tube by taping it to the bridge of the client's nose using a commercial securement device or a non-allergenic tape that is 3 inch in length and has been split in one end with a 1 inch tab at the other end.
Lastly, we need to secure the tubing to the client's gown using an elastic band. And loop this at the end of the tubing. And secure it to the gown using a safety pin. After the procedure, discard the disposable pad or towel. Remove your gloves. And perform hand hygiene. Then we will proceed to evaluation and documentation where we will evaluate the client's response to the procedure and document the procedure done as well as any other important data on the patient's chart. And this ends my presentation, my demonstration. Thank you for watching.